Hello everyone, welcome back to another one of my videos. In this, the first of uh, three parts, I will be discussing my Anglo-Boer War British impression of the a orderly in the Royal Army Medical Corps. This first episode will cover issue kit, items that were issued out. The second episode will cover uniforms. In the third episode, we'll cover Medical Corps specific equipment. Here we have my set of Pattern 88, or uh, also called Slade Wallace equipment. Uh, this setup is currently uh, specific to the Royal Army Medical Corps, hence the bayonet, originally one of either two types of bayonets either the usually the Lancaster bayonet or as what I have currently set up this is a uh, 1858 sword bayonet for the 1858 short rifle uh, typically you would have seen a Lancaster bayonet more often uh, they were more common seems to be in pictures of originals However, I have seen a couple of original photos that were of RAMC uh, soldiers who have the Yatagan, that's another name for it, of the, of the P-58 bayonet. Uh, the main reason is this is a reproduction, and it's a pretty good reproduction. It was affordable, which is the, the biggest reason why I have this vice a Lancaster bayonet. I simply cannot afford a six to eight hundred dollar bayonet for this impression. Otherwise, the rest of the equipment is pretty standard. Uh, you'll notice there is no uh, cartridge pouches because the REMC were not equipped with rifles. They were um, non-combatant, technically, so they had no need, mean, need for rifles or ammunition. Uh, occasionally, you will see photographs. Well, I've seen one photograph of RAMC Trooper who has a, uh, a ammunition pouch on his Slate Wallace gear. It's inexplicable. Nobody really knows why, but it's there. Uh, you can see here in the center, I've got my uh, blanket roll, and uh, I have my D-shaped mess tin in a oil skin uh, cover, and it's all strapped in with the different various straps of the P88. Uh, if you would like to see a very in-depth, detailed look at the PA-8 equipment, you should check out uh, Rob at British Muzzleloader's channel. He has a great video going over PA-8, how it all goes together. It was instrumental when I was putting together my own uh, set here. So I've spent the last couple of minutes, um, probably more like the last half hour, with my Boer War equipment. And I've been working on stenciling a few of the items. You see, here's my uh, personal roll with my information on it. That's my assumed identity. And then the different markings. And I've also got the housewife that I made, uh, which I have a video on. I have the number on it that I've stamped. Over here, got this bag that the uh, buffing brushes go into. I have a pair of brushes, both of them are stamped with my number, as is the bag itself. And it's just a little bit of what. It, I have for my impression right now. I did all the stamping with these little 
small, probably half inch tall stamps that I got at the craft store. There is more information that I need to stencil. I need to stencil my haversack as well as my sea bag or it's not really a sea bag, it's a kit bag, British service. And then also all of my leather gear. So I, uh, I'm not going to do that with these small stamps. It looks like from all the uh, images of original stamps that I've seen, they all seem to have been done with one inch high letters. So uh, as soon as I can get out and get a set of one inch high letters, I will stamp those. Here we have my haversack equipment, all the items that are carried in my haversack. For the particular impression that I'm doing, uh, which is uh, a more campaign look, not necessarily you know full home service style kit, uh, most of the necessary items carried by the soldier were carried in a haversack. Uh, sometimes worn across the back like a backpack. And they typically packed very light. They kept their kit bags with a lot of their unnecessary equipment back with wagons or in storage depots. Uh, so when they were actually campaigning, they had very light equipment. And this is sort of reflecting that. It's just sort of the bare, bare bones minimum items that they would have carried. So here we have the haversack, the housewife or sewing kit that I made in a previous video, a issue towel, got the uh, issue iron ration, which was an emergency ration. Uh, it consisted of uh, a meat powder or meat paste and a chocolate powder, chocolate paste type two-part ration. It, the original would uh, split in the middle with the D-ring that you can see there. And uh, it was only to be ordered, it was only to be opened upon express order of an officer. So while they were carried in sort of a ubiquitous item, uh, they really weren't used all that often, or they weren't supposed to be. I have a tin of, uh, of tea. It is uh, dehydrated tablets of tea. It could be made while out on campaign. I have my roll of uh, toiletry items, mess items that I stamped in the previous section of this video. Got tooth powder, shaving brush, uh, shoelaces, comb, got razor, toothbrush, uh, a brass. Uh, button shining board spoon knife fork uh, and then you've got a little shaving mirror or a single mirror this is a reproduction of a specific type that was marketed to soldiers going to South Africa got a blue sweater blue jumper which was a pretty popular item for camp wear and then uh, I've got my little tobacco box it's an old uh, it's a vintage 1890s tobacco tin that has a little uh, small pouch with some tobacco in it. It's a very small pipe and a uh, box of matches. The haversack itself is of a type known to uh, Boer War reenactors as the Boer War pattern of haversack. It's not an official pattern, or doesn't seem to be. There's no information in the record of changes about this pattern. It doesn't conform to any of the official patterns, but there are uh, lots of extant examples, lots of photos of soldiers with similar haversacks. Uh, they were a lot larger than the standard issue haversack. And I think that that was probably the, the issue was soldiers especially using the uh, 
The haversack is their primary means of carrying equipment around on campaign. Needed something a lot bigger than the standard haversack. Standard haversack is about half the size of, of, uh, of this, this one. Um, I actually, uh, I didn't make it from scratch, but it's a combination of two different haversacks. Uh, this is a uh, British 1850s haversack body that I then grafted a, uh, a later style strap onto. And while it's not 100% uh, according to the extant examples, it does overall and generally fit the type. The, uh, the flap shape is it's acceptable, but it's not quite what you see in originals. Uh, but I am, I'm happy with how it came out and how it looks. And it, it has added benefit of being a lot better than the, uh, the other issue pattern haversack I had because I just I simply I ran into the same problems the actual soldiers did. I simply couldn't fit all the equipment that I needed to in it. My canteen is a Civil War, American Civil War reproduction canteen that I converted into a uh, Boer War pattern water bottle. Uh, it was. It originally came with this brown cover. Um, I took the cover off. I modified it slightly. I uh, put blue enamel on the canteen, which is the original canteens were all blue enameled. Uh, I replaced the chain and some of the hardware on the cork to be more appropriate. It's not 100%, but it's certainly a lot better than it looked in its original guise. And then I replaced the strap with a, a reproduction uh, proper Boer War uh, two-piece leather um, water bottle strap. These, when they were originally made, were made out of two uh, old sporin straps from uh, Scottish regiments. Here are the items that were carried in the kit bag, or that I'm going to be using in my kit bag. Uh, I will discuss it in further detail in the next episode, but this is the great coat. Then in addition to the great coat, I have a spare shirt, a spare pair of socks, my bag with my buffing brushes and dubbing, the bag itself, and then also the uh, brass carry handle and padlock that secure it closed.